catching up with us once again, Dave. Let's have a little chat about some business that you did yesterday. I think it's gone down very well with your supporters. I think as a management team, you must be delighted to bring Billy Jones back. Yeah, we swapped a championship player for a Premier League player. That'll do for us. Good to get him back, though. Uh, you know, he's, he knows everything about it. How did it all come about? Was he was he one of those that you kept under the radar and moved in quickly? Yeah, look, we. I know all the staff at Rotherham. Um, I spoke to uh, Rob Scott. I've said Rotherham have been absolutely brilliant. Uh, it's been a good deal, I've said, but good, good all round. Um, but, but, but they were very helpful, um, and we thank them for that. It was, you know, uh, like I said. His agent, who um, last week wasn't in my best books, but um, was was very good, I have to say as well. Um, so yeah, it was. We spoke to Rotherham. Rotherham spoke back to us in in favourable terms, and and then we spoke to the agent and the player, and here he is. So it was fairly straightforward, um, and I think it's a good deal for everyone. Yeah, you would have spoken to the player at length to, to get him to come here. What what the vibes from him? How how does he feel about coming back? He wants to play good football, and you know he wants to, he wants to probably maximise his abilities. That's not to say he wasn't doing that, Rotherham. Um, I, I don't know if he was or he wasn't, to be honest. Um, but he, you know, we just had an hour's chat there, sort of saying, um, you know, what what's what are you going to bring? This is how we play. This is what we do. You know, go and meet the boys and can you do this? Can you do that? And he's, and he's, he'll be fine. He's, he's got a wealth of experience. Will it take him a game or two? Maybe. Training session or two? Maybe. But look, we, we're, you know, we've got a team full of good players and Billy's a good player. So I'm sure he'll fit right in. He's one of those players as well. I know in the early days when he was here, he could play across the back line and he probably could still do that if you needed him to. Yeah, he's, he's for Rotherham this year in the Championship, he's played left back, right back and holding midfielder. He hasn't played centre half because I think they've got quite a lot of them. Um, but he could play there at a push as well. So that versatility was another key key factor in, um, in bringing Billy in, I have to say. You know, the more players that can play more positions, in the current climate, in the in terms of squad cap numbers, in terms of COVID, in terms of number of games in such a short period of time, that's a it's a real um, important facet to any player's armour at the minute. And Billy can do that. We've got a few of our our own who can do that. You know, that's already here. Um, but Billy being able to play in numerous positions. Also, I have to say, dictated our um, or influenced our decision in trying to trying to bring him back. And the one thing he has got, Dave, he, as well as that versatility, he's got some goals to his name as well, hasn't he? I think he's around about twenty-five goals in his career. Yeah, yeah. Is it's, it's again all that all that is part of the package that he's Billy Jones. He scored a tap in at Crew when he first got in the team. Which we've all seen numerous times over the last sort of twenty-four hours. Um, so yeah, he's, he's got a, he's got the ability to do it. He's got excellent techniques, and when and if he gets chances at the final third of the pitch, we expect him to take them like we do expect any of the forward players to take them. Because when you've got good techniques, a shot is just another pass. You just go hit the corners, and, and beat the keeper. So, you know, I'm fully aware that Billy can add something at both ends of the pitch and that's what we want because the last man to do that and, and Travis has started to do that I have to say so he's got, he's, Billy's got to be able to do that as well Don't want you to divulge too much then but would he be involved if he was involved tomorrow in those corner routines? <laughs> well, let's see how we get on today um, Let's see how we get on today there's, there's no you know like I said I said to you straight after the game there's no there was no pressure on us Certainly for this game, obviously I can't say going forward because people might get injured. But there's no pressure on us for this game to bring anyone in um, because we've got two good young fullbacks that are finding the feet. Yes, 
and, and Travis certainly is making the right good fist of it and heading in the right direction and, and doing ever so well. So we've got no, like I said, no uh, pressure to to play Billy. We'll see how he is. Last thing we want to do is play him and then injure him. So we'll uh, we'll see how he is in the next, you know, this morning and, and tomorrow morning and and have a chat with him and, and we'll go from there. Can you bring us right up to date then with how you are in the treatment room? Because it was a worrying sight. Luke Offord and Harry Pickering joined Donovan Daniels, but those are the two players, of course, at the moment have been extra added to the list. So what what's the SP on those two? On Luke and Harry. Yes, yeah, please. Um, Luke's got a grade one hamstring. So um, he won't be playing tomorrow. Um, but it's nowhere near as bad as what any of us thought. So I think it might have even been a touch of cramp. You know, the incessant... I have to say, I've, I've said this to the staff and I'll say it to Luke, you know, I should take a hell of a lot of the responsibility for him getting injured. He's played a lot, a lot of games, for, and when I say an immature frame, his body's not used to playing the amount of games yet. And I played 10, 15 towards the end of last year, and he was getting to that point. And he's played a lot of games this year, and he had, yes, he had breaks. I think we didn't play him in the Papa John's a couple of times for that reason. Um, but because he's such an old head on young shoulders, you forget. And it's, like I say, from my point, I should have, you know, it's, it's only with the benefit of hindsight, obviously. Um, you know, and if he didn't get injured, we all go, oh, well, we don't even think anything more of it. But when you look back, you think that was the time. The warning signs probably were there and he probably shouldn't have played. Um, not because he was going into it with an injury, but just the amount of games and... and you know, I, I can keep myself really, um, but that's <laughs> we all live and learn, I suppose. But, um, but he's not going to be out for too long anyway, so it's not that disastrous. So, you know, not compared to the other couple of hamstrings with Donovan and Callum that we've had. So, well, that's the that's the prognosis as it stands today. So that's that's good news. Harry, he he he's got a, a back spasm, a side strain, and we'll, we'll see how he is. Um, it's, it's as simple as that, really. Just looking into where you are then, Wimbledon come next. It's a quick turnaround in fixtures against Wimbledon. It wasn't many weeks ago, of course, that you went there and got the dramatic late goal to bring home the points. But like any other game, they might not be uh, having the best of runs at the moment, but like any other game in League One, it's a challenge, it's a test for, for your boys to get the result. Oh, yeah. Listen, they've got some good players. We saw that when we went down there. They've got some excellent players. And if we needed any um, uh, evidence that anyone can beat anyone, I think if you did watch the game last night at Anfield, that proves the point. It proves the point, and that's in the best league in the world. So if it can happen in the best league in the world, it can certainly happen in League One. We've got to be wary of that, mindful of that, um, and make sure we, you know, play to the levels we, we know we can play at and know we should play at. You know, we don't fear anyone in this league, but we've got to, we respect everyone. And that's exactly, that doesn't matter whether it's Wimbledon. Oh, who's top? I don't know who's top. Hull. Or Hull. And anyway, everyone in between. So that, that's where we're at. That, that doesn't change. I, I, I like Glenn um, and I think he's got a good team. And yes, they're having a bit of a sticky patch, but that doesn't mean anything really, unless you go and make it something. And we've got to make it into a positive something and not a negative something. We spoke about it uh, the other night, about that terrific goal that you, you you brought to the game. It's a great reward, isn't it, for everybody? It's still being talked about now, that uh, that corner routine. And, you know, I listened to Paul Tinsdale's uh, interview as well. He was waxing lyrical, even though it was against his side. The, the, the way that uh, the way that you, you you conjured it up and, and and did it, but for everybody in the football club to see that happen gives great rewards, doesn't it? Yeah, look, we we work hard at all facets of the game, and set pieces is one of them. You know, you 
you know, we, we beat the Rovers and we've got to remember that they scored off two set pieces. One was a, a fabulously executed free kick that nobody could have done anything about other than the referee not giving the free kick in the first place because it wasn't. It was a, it was a disgraceful decision. The, the, the first goal, the corner, we can do something about. Now that's a challenge for us. That's what we've got to do because that's happened two out of the last three games. But then in open, you go, fine, okay, you know, We've got to, we've got to um, improve in that area. But in terms of open play and, and general play, there wasn't too many chances created, you know, for, for, for Bristol. Well, that's a, that's a it's a good thing. So, like I said, we work hard at that side of the game, at set pieces, both for and against, then in open play. So when you see a, a well worked corner routine go in. When it's so obvious like that, I don't think anyone can sort of deny that it's come straight off the training ground. But there's other things that you work on in set pieces that you go, well, that worked. But it's just not as obvious because there's a ball here or a ball there. You've got to remember, we scored another goal from a set piece with a fantastic diving header for Molly. People don't understand what happened and why it happened, but we do. And we're just as pleased with that as we are with the one that everyone's seen. So... No, it's pleasing. We need to score more from set pieces than we did on, on Tuesday night and that's got to continue. I know you haven't had a long time to talk to the players and, and get yourself your thoughts in, but are you speaking about trying to get yourself switched on at uh, after 45 minutes and you've come out of that dressing room? Because you did mention it, didn't you? Yeah, listen, I'm not going to have half time. I'm just going to leave them out there and let them get cold. <laughs> I think that's the plan this week. Um because obviously whatever I'm saying or whatever we're doing is is not worked in two of the last three games. But obviously at Plymouth it improved the performance second half. Look, we, we've we have to start better than what we have done in like I said two of the last three games in the second half. Maybe the trick is to, to allow them to kick off <laughs> first half. <laughs> I'm not sure, but um, look, it's, it's it's an area for improvement in in the recent games, and that's what we've got to do. And and if we keep improving. We'll be we'll be fine, and we are improving. You know, we're nine unbeaten, and we, we've got to we've got to make that ten and eleven and fourteen and sixteen, and, and go on as long as we can and see where it takes us.